We're beginning to wrap up your thoughts and thank your partner for sharing and for listening. Going back into the space. Welcome. Great job with Psycho Knowledge, Diane and Becca. Welcome back, David and Marcella. <laughs> Thanks for navigating that, Julie. Welcome back, everyone, into the space. Yeah, unmute. Unmute, unmute. Go ahead, Ron. So anyone interested in sharing what that was like for you, either the practice of listening, the practice of sharing in that way, or anything that arose for you, your own, your own content about where you might give a little bit less or give a little bit more moving forward. I thought Fran was unmuting over there. Anyone brave enough to share in or courageous enough or inspired? If everyone passes, that's fine too. I just want to make sure that everyone can really feel the space. Please, David, great. Cool. Um, thank you. So uh, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the um, experience of listening. Um, I, th I think that's the first time that I know of that I listened so with such intention and without so trying to think of what I might say, you know what I mean, or having some sort of reaction in my own about my own life based on what she was saying. Um, so that was really I liked it. It felt it felt good to not even it just felt good to leave my own mind sort of not focus on date, you know, David, which is it all 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 the time. So um yeah. Anyway, thank you for that. It was a good experience. Thank and you good so to much. meet Marcelo too. Yeah, right? Nice. Yeah, so all David all the time. Yeah, I know that one. All Augusta all the time, right? That's how it is in there for the star of the show. And what a for me anyway, what a relief when I can have that break. And in your experience, like just listen to Marcella. We're not expected to respond or agree or like encourage or whatever. The, our responsibility is to rest and to be and to open. And that's a lot of what I hope we cultivate in our own formal practice, whether it's on the cushion or standing or lying down, whatever that posture is, but oh, to listen, to be here for ourselves. And maybe it isn't so verbal, but the emotional state or the physical state and the, for me often the ease that that can bring when there's freedom from doing, right? Yeah, thanks so much, David. Yeah, I would I would echo that what David just said. I I really uh feel like it was an interesting experience for me to listen. Um to my partner, uh, and I, I, I still had that impulse right in my head of like, oh, but what about this? Or like, you know, wanting to jump in. And it, like, I still had the talk track in my brain, but I didn't say anything. And you know, it it doesn't matter, nor nor should I. Or you know, it, it's fine. Um, but I now hearing David talk about it, I realize like there's something there about that the the, pur the whole purpose the point you were trying to make, I'll guess that, right? Like, uh, like maybe too less jumping in, too less trying to fix things or, you know, do more being, just accepting the silence or taking in things how they are a little bit more. Oh, amazing, right? A teaching right in there, Sophie. Right, and can we do that for ourselves in our meditation practice in our lives? Can we do less fixing and more being with us? Really beautiful. Thank you very much.
maybe we're complete or maybe there's another voice that is inspired to come in on the topic of what the practice was like or on the topic of the content that arose for you of what you might do less of or more of or give more energy to or less energy to not too little not too much I, I really appreciate it the opportunity to spend a whole three minutes that felt like longer. But um, both talking and listening, it, uh, it was uncomfortable, but in a good way. And it felt like uh, really like new neuron pathways are being formed in my brain to form, to communicate non-verbally with them that I was listening and just also to uh, just be in the moment and I could breathe easier as I was listening. And yeah, but speaking was a little hard because I'm used to having the interaction and the um, feedback. And so, yeah, it's been a Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I like the interaction too. You know, we'll have noticed this in my teaching style and that there's a lot of interaction. I don't wanna just talk at you. I don't wanna just talk at me. It doesn't, and yet there's a place for this and the stopping and the being and the receiving. And then there's the time to actually have the microphone. Like, no, I have something to say and to feel safe, comfortable, confident, to know you're not gonna be interrupted. You can share from your heart, which is what I endeavor to do when I'm up here. Whether I'm in the seat over here, on Zoom land or I'm in the seat over there in the collective is to share from my heart, my experience. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. There's space for more, if there's more, kind of sense that we might be closed, but if there's something there, I'd love to hear from you. I thought it was, I love that it was actually, and I thought it was, um, uh, I'm sorry, I think you need the mic. Thanks, Walt. Yeah, um, so I love the exercise, and, um, I, I thought it was much easier for me to, to feel what's in my body, um, during that period, because, yeah, normally during a talk, I think, or like response to what other people are saying, or things like that. And now I just have the whole three minutes to, you know, listen to what, whatever in my body or, yeah, them or, yeah. So that was very nice. I think. That's awesome. How many people found themselves remembering occasionally to listen to their bodies? as if they were listening to their partner. Nice, Marcella, Ron. Yeah, Glenn, nice. Oh, great, Becca. And Sophie, wonderful. Maybe other people too, that's who I saw. Yeah, and it's a remembering practice, right? <laughs> you know, just like the, the um, playing or the standing, it's, it's a returning, it's a remembering. And then we drop in and we feel, and then la la la, and then oh yeah, and la la la. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. All right. Is there more? Are we complete? Okay. Great. So I invite you to feel into your body and take a moment to move and stretch and as I like to sometimes say, get the wiggles out, you know? Sometimes the wiggles can help wake the body up a little bit so you can feel more. I don't really want to feel the achiness in my body. But I know that recognizing it and turning toward it is helpful. Hmm. So in one way, I'm going to do a little more and a little less when we're finished, is I'm going to have a hot bath. 
and care for my aches, Epsom salts, maybe some, maybe a steam. Because <sighs> like many of you, I've worked all day, right? It's not like I just got to rest. <laughs> yeah. So as you find your posture, settling into stillness or relative stillness, Feeling your feet. Wherever that might be, maybe they're all tucked in as you sit there in full lotus or half lotus or some kind of cross legged position. Or maybe they're resting on the floor as you sit in a chair. or you're standing and they're firmly planted on the floor or you're lying down or some other posture I'm not thinking of at the moment. Feeling into the body, resting into the feet. Just as we listen to one another, Tuning in, listening in to the feet. Noticing how they feel in this moment. However they feel, it's just fine. Not supposed to feel any particular way. I invite you to notice how they feel. We're probably making contact with something on some portion of the feet. Resting into that, feeling that. Feeling that gentle pressure, or maybe more than gentle pressure. I'm noticing the areas of the feet where there's an absence of pressure. Maybe you're barefoot like me and there's some air on the feet somewhere. Or socks, we can feel the coziness of the socks. Or slippers even maybe. And we might feel into the feet, noticing the temperature, warm, cool. And then if there's any sensation in the feet that becomes discernible, a, a tingling or a pulsing, Maybe not, just checking it out, exploring.
Continuing the exploration, tuning in to the hands. Experiencing the hands resting just where they are. No need for anything to change. Listening into our own bodies. Perhaps one hand is holding the other, or the hands are resting face down or face up on the lap, or resting to the sides of your body, or they're in another posture. Great. Feeling them and noticing if they're in contact with anything else. And feeling into those points of contact. Gentle pressure, warmth, whatever might be present there, opening to it, listening, bringing this curious attentiveness, curiosity, and attention. Feeling the hands and feeling in to the hands as well. Perhaps noticing if a tingling or a pulsing is discernible inside the hands. Allowing the hands and the feet to be just as they are. Allowing yourself to be just as you are. Resting in with whatever level of openness or curiosity or presence is available. No need for it to be any different than it is. And noticing where attention is drawn. Perhaps attention is drawn into your seat as you feel the body resting on the chair or cushion, mat. Or maybe attention is drawn to sounds, this experience of hearing as sounds arise and pass.
Your attention might be drawn anywhere. Great. Noticing it. Becoming aware of what you are aware of. Maybe attention gets drawn to the breath, fine. I'd like to invite you to explore practicing, allowing yourself to be aware of whatever it is you are aware of. Cultivating our ability to rest into the field of awareness. which is quite different from directing our attention to a particular object of awareness. We begin with that, resting into the feet, resting into the hands. And if that's most supportive for you, please continue to do that. And if you wanna explore, Not too little, not too much. Trusting yourself. Trusting yourself. Not too much effort, not too little effort. You might explore with me resting in to the field of awareness. Noticing, attending to, being aware of what arises. and how that feels in the body. Noticing how the heart responds to that which you become aware of. As we cultivate this practice, we might notice some leaning in or grasping when a pleasant experience comes into the field of awareness. Just as we might notice Some pushing away or aversion, some contraction in the heart as we become aware of an unpleasant experience in the field of awareness. It's okay. What if we could soften and greet whatever our experience might be? Yeah, what if we could meet greed or meet aversion with acceptance, love like this. Or we can meet that pleasant or we can meet that pleasant or unpleasant experience. Oh, hi there. Oh, it's like this. We could rest in, rest into our experience, rest into our bodies, our hearts, our guts. Allowing each moment to arise and pass, to flow on as it does without getting caught by it, not trying to get in the mix. Just as when listening to your partner, you allowed what they were saying and whatever arose in you in response to what they were saying, you allowed it all to flow, to arise and pass away without action.
the most radical act of non-doing, radical act of being, learning to be with ourselves. Just as we are. Perfectly imperfect. Perfectly human. Befriending ourselves. Noticing what we are aware of. Exploring the possibility of simply receiving that which we are aware of. And when we resist or grasp, Simply receiving that, like, oh yeah, this is what grasping feels like in the body. And this is what aversion feels like in the body. Okay, no problem. This is life. Resting in and down, not too little, not too much. Resting. Oh, opening. Receiving. Moment by moment,
What are you aware of? Just gently noticing. Resting, opening, listening, listening in.
observing the arising and passing of experience, both internally and externally. Thoughts, sounds, sensations. All arising in the field of awareness. All passing in the field of awareness. When we are aware of them, we are not caught in them. The body can hold it. Resting down into the feet, down into the seat. Opening to the experience arising and passing moment by moment. Receiving the sound of the bell, arising and passing, opening to and experiencing the impermanence directly. Feeling your practice in whatever way is meaningful for you. And then gradually allowing the field of awareness to expand, to include movement, 
really feeling the body moving, continuing to listen in. And to be guided, not too little, not too much. And as you're ready, when you're ready, bring it in sight. And taking in what you see, noticing the rectangles and the circles, the non geometrical forms, the triangles. Noticing, noticing, and if it's available, noticing how the heart, mind, and body respond to that which is seen, to that which is known. And when you're ready, come into our, our glasses of water. or mugs of water or vessels. And I'd like you to, if you have two hands, put two hands on your container and feel it, feel the weight of it. It's not, not too heavy, it's kind of heavy, like whatever reality is. And if it's lidded, you might take off the lid and feel yourself taking off the lid aware of that pressure being engaged with it so that it's ready to ready for you to drink it. And then there's this practice of the first four bites from the Plum Village tradition. I find really helpful and particularly in our busy fast paced lives, if we eat too quickly, it's not really good for our bodies. And when we're going, 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 we might kind of not eat, maybe, or maybe overeat, like we do all kinds of things. And we can bring awareness to this experience of eating and slow it down enough that we might enjoy our meal. A dear friend of mine was telling me the other day, she went to this new restaurant in her neighborhood. She was so excited to get blah, 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 blah. She sat down to eat it. She was so excited. And then she opened her computer. And she got to the last bite of her delicious meal. And she was like, I didn't taste it at all. But then she had that last bite that she did taste. And I was able to say to her, great that you had that one bite. You know, one bite's better than zero. So this is for the first four bites. So we're just gonna do it with water. But my hope is that this might be available to you outside of our time together. The first phrase is, with this first bite, sip in this case, I practice the love that brings joy. She's crazy out there. If we can bring a little bit of love into ourselves, into our, the day, into our moments, we're gonna have a little bit more ease, a little more capacity to navigate the challenges of life. So with this first bite, I practice the love that brings joy. And then if you're eating something, I invite you to put the food in your mouth, and then put down the apple or the chopsticks or the spoon or whatever you're eating with the fork, the sandwich, the burrito, put it down. Breathe all the way in and all the way out, which we can do now. And maybe repeat to ourselves with this first sip I practice the love that brings joy. And so you can do that with me. You can Put the water in your mouth, put the vessel down, let the water sit there, repeat those phrases, feel the breath. And then after a breath and a half, swallowing. So we give ourselves a moment to feel that aspiration. So with this first bite, I practice the love that brings joy. Hmm. 
allowing your body to receive this precious gift of fresh water, potable water. And then as you're ready, picking up your cup again, two hands. With this second bite, I practice the love that brings a release from suffering. Same deal. Take the sip, let it sit in the mouth, put the cup down, breathe in, out in, repeat perhaps. With this second bite, I practice the love that brings a release from suffering. And then swallowing, or if you were eating, and then beginning to chew. You're slowing it all down a little bit. Thich Nhat Hanh once said, drink your rice and chew your soup. Now chew that rice up enough that you can drink it and take enough time with the soup so that you're really chewing it. All right, with the second bite, I practice the love that brings a release from suffering. On the third bite. Get in the vessel one more time. With this third bite, I practice the love of myself. I'm bringing that bite or that sip into the mouth, putting the sandwich or the vessel down, breathing in and out and in, maybe repeating the freeze. With this third bite, I practice the love of myself and then beginning to chew or in our case right now, then swallowing or swishing the water around, like chew that soup, finding your path to your way. The final bite of this practice. Once more with the vessel, two hands, full presence. With this fourth bite, I practice the love of all beings. Notice how that feels in the body, in your body in this moment. With this fourth bite, I practice the love of all beings. Thank you for your practice. That's the four bites.
I love the practice of four bites. It's been, I learned it in Vietnam in 2006. Yeah, nearly 20 years pretty soon. And it's, it's really nourished me. And I forget, of course, I forget sometimes. But then we remember and it's available. Yeah. Hmm. My hope is that as we continue our journey, our cultivation of the practice of awareness, we come to recognize that we can be aware of or mindful of anything. Anything. A bad mood, a good mood, a sip of water, the smell of something stinky. Like, oh, oh, I'm aware of this thing, and I'm aware of my response to it. Both can be held in the field of awareness. Both can be held with gentleness, with kindness, with love, with care. And as we discern, as we recognize how we are navigating the moment, our day, our life, there's a greater capacity to meet ourselves in the moment with tenderness, with gentleness, with care, with an appropriate response with what is beneficial. Now, I would have loved to come into the collective today. It would be so nice to be with all of you. I've been on Zoom enough today. I love being with you. I love being in the space. And there was enough wisdom that could emerge and say, I don't think that's a good idea. Right? Discernment could arise. And I don't have to go all the way to not doing and just bail, right? Not too little, not too much. There's a balance. And for me, I can only discern what that balance is, what's not too little, not too much, when I slow down. And I'm super speedy. So if I slow down a little bit, it's like I'm going at maybe a normal pace. And without the slowing down, I just steamroll. Go, go, go. It is too much. And this digital age that we're in, it's, I find, I don't think I'm the only one, but I find that it's really inspiring us to go too fast and to do too much. Somehow we think we're supposed to keep up with technology. And we're not zeros and ones. For flesh and blood, it's a different process. It's a different processor. And we have to tend to it and care for it. And maybe in your busy days, when you do stop to have a sip of water or take a bite of food or even a whole meal, you can bring in this little practice of the first four bites to help you reset and come home to yourself. Bring in a little love, a little tenderness, a little care as we continue to find our way to not too little, not too much. And to remember that in one moment, what is not too little, not too much might not be the same thing in another moment. You know, not to call what out or anything, but today, what's not too little, not too much is not the same as a month ago, right? You have a procedure, you go into the hospital, you have to take it easy for a while. And many of us, that's uncomfortable because we're used to our active lifestyles. And when we take it easy, if we actually listen in, we take it slow and gradual and we keep listening in, we are able to be back to the active lives we want to live. And we have to slow down enough to listen and recognize, oh, something's not right. And to turn to a trusted friend or a professional and say, can you help me? This discernment that can arise as we cultivate our ability to be present, to attune to ourselves, to listen as you all did to one another. And I hope for yourselves this evening, discernment arises as we engage in that way. We recognize moment by moment the balance 
but not too little, not too much. And I hope that can support you in the radical act of not overdoing it. Thank you for your kind attention.